Hi guys, today we're going to learn about chemo spills and chemo spill buckets. You've already watched the slideshow, so now we're just going to do a presentation of exactly how this process is supposed to go. After you've watched the PowerPoint and you watch this video, we will be doing hands-on um, trainings so that you are prepared for the real thing in the event that we have a hazardous drug spill. So the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to make sure that you grab a chemo spill kit. In the PowerPoint presentation, it talks about where these are located throughout the hospital. We also have chemo spill buckets. Just here, see that beautiful thing there? So let's get into it and see how this is supposed to go. So the very first thing that you're going to do when you notice that there is a chemo spill is that you are going to remove the patient from the immediate area um, or if they would be the ones who are sitting on the bed or in the chair and had chemo on them, removing their clothes with double gloved hands, um, getting that off of them, getting them into new gowns and linens, and just making sure that no one in this area is going to track through our chemo spill that we have here on the floor. The way that you're going to do that is by grabbing your chemo spill kit. Inside of your chemo spill kit, there is a sign here that says caution chemotherapy drug spill. So you're going to display it where people can see it and just put it right down there after you folded it. Then we are going to get ourselves ready in our PPE. Everything that you need is going to be in your chemo spill kit. So whether you grab just a spill kit or you grab a chemo spill bucket, it has everything that you need. So we've ensured that the scene is safe. No one's going to be tracking through it. Our patients are no longer in contact with the chemo. We're gonna go ahead Don our PPE and get ready for cleanup. So now that you've grabbed your chemo spill kit, let's talk about what's inside of it. Inside of your chemo spill kit is going to be goggles or face shield to protect your eyes and your face. There's going to be two sets of chemotherapy resistant drugs. So they're just a little bit tougher than regular rubber gloves. You have your scoop or your shovel. Here are your booty covers or your shoe coverings. This here is a thick gown, so make sure that you're using the one that's in the chemo spill kit, not just a regular isolation gown. This is going to be a little bit thicker. You also have these gel absorbent pads. They look like this. They're in the chemo spill kit. They are also located in the chemo bucket, um, and those are just extra in case we would need those. We have some dry pads. We have a respirator, so if you have an N95 that you're fitted for laying around, you can use it. But you have to have a respirator on, so just use this if you, if you need to. Then you're also going to have two yellow hazardous bags. Yellow indicates to everyone around that that means chemo, so make sure that you're using yellow. Um, you will have blue linen bags for any blue any linens that you use for the patient. So whether that's their gown or their bed linens, um, you will just use regular blue linen bags. You will also have this hazardous drug exposure report in your chemo spill kit. That will be filled out every time you use a chemo spill kit that's sent to pharmacy. You are also going to fill out an RLS, and that's just so that we can see where was the breakdown, what can we do differently. We don't want to continue to expose people to hazardous drugs, so how can we improve that process? Let's get it on. All right, we're donning our PPE. So let's go ahead and get our shoe coverings on. going to get a set of chemotherapy or <laughs> chemo gloves on. Next you're going to get your gown on. Second set of gloves go on over top of the gown. That way they are covering 
this way. And now you're good to go. So now you're going to grab your yellow biohazard bags and you're going to open them up. So one of them is going to be placed on the outside. So for right now, we are just going to use one bag to hold all of our chemo waste. You can roll down the side, so that way you decrease the risk of getting waste on the outside of the bag and contaminating yourself when we go to put the rest of the waste into the bag. Like that. All right, that's set off to the side. So I'm now going to put my gel pads onto my spill here. And they should turn into gel when you put it on. In the event that you need to kind of move it around, that's okay to do if you need to. Um, but just try to avoid touching as much as you can. So that'll stay, that'll kind of absorb the chemo, turn to a gel. And then we're going to come through here and use our shovel and a scoop to get that gel pad up now. So now that that's all absorbed, we're going to take all of this and put it into our yellow bag, just like that. The thing that you're going to do now that we have contained the spill is we are going to deactivate and decontaminate the area. Still wearing your PPE, you're going to grab one of these dry cloths. You're also going to need Paradox. That's going to deactivate the chemo and decontaminate. And you will need alcohol. So these are the two things we're going to need. We're going to start with the paradox. So you're going to directly pour the paradox onto the pad. The pad's folded into fourths. Pour directly onto one side of the pad. And then you are going to clean from the center of the spill to the outermost area. So we're going to do that. Now the contact time for that is three minutes. That has to be there for three minutes before we do anything else. Let's say that three minutes has passed. Our next thing is to either grab a new wipe or fold our fourths again. Put your Paradox on to here. And then you are going to clean from the center to the outside. And the contact time for that is one minute. Once one minute has passed, the next thing you're going to do is dispose of this into your yellow waste bag because this is now contaminated. You're going to grab another dry cloth and some alcohol directly onto the pad. 70% isopropyl alcohol, you're going to clean from the center to the outside of the spill. This area has now been deactivated and decontaminated, and you can remove your PPE. Now that you've done the chemo spill cleanup on the floor, you'll also need to deactivate and decontaminate 
the products that you used. So using a dry cloth, take Paradox and wipe the outside of both the Paradox, the bucket, the handle, the alcohol, anything that you're going to be putting back into circulation. So you'll wipe the outside of those off, wait for three minutes, that's your contact time. After three minutes, you will take Paradox again with a new dry cloth and wipe all of those surfaces again with a contact time of one minute. After the one minute has passed, you will then take 70% isopropyl alcohol and wipe all of those products down again, and now they have been properly decontaminated and deactivated. When you're doffing your PPE, you will remove the outer layer of gloves, your respirator mask, your safety glasses, your shoe coverings, and your gown. Ensure that you are not contaminating yourself by touching any skin or eyes or any facial features. You will put all of this into a yellow chemo waste bag that you've already been using. By this time you should only be wearing your inner gloves and you will close the first yellow bag and place it into a second yellow chemo waste bag, securing the bag. Place the first yellow chemo waste bag into a second biohazard bag and secure that. Remove your gloves and call housekeeping. Alert them that you have hazardous waste that needs to be transported. They have a rolling mechanism to ensure that we're not dragging this on the floor or hitting it up against our leg continuing to expose. In the event that it's an off hour, the house supervisor can get this rolling mechanism cart. Now it's time to wash your hands.